Colorado's San Juan Mountains lies the rugged, expert-only ski resort of Silverton Mountain. Silverton has one chairlift with hike to terrain, but also boasts affordable heli days from one to six drops. Three heli runs is the magic number to get deep into the backcountry, and we chose the full day six run heli, hoping to explore the 29,000 acres of terrain. Every heli day is different. Every heli run is unique. And with a storm rolling in, we weren't sure what our experience might look like. Silverton is in Southwest Colorado and one of six ski resorts along Colorado's Potter Highway. The town is a one hour drive north of Durango over Molas Pass or 25 miles south of Uray over Red Mountain Pass on the most dangerous road in the US, the Million Dollar Highway. We woke up at the Wyman Hotel with six inches of fresh snow and drove the six miles from town to the Silverton base area. Our heartbeats are already perking up. There was plenty of parking as only about 100 people are allowed per day when guided and up to 475 when unguided opens late season. Silverton has one double chairlift from the base to 12,300 feet and hiking routes to reach above 13,000 feet on the west face with access to the north and east faces. Heli starts from the top of the lift and flies to several proprietary heli zones. Can you tell I really don't want to get lost today? Neon, safety orange. Leave no Jennifer behind. There's a lot more pre-helicopter prep than we thought. From the parking lot, we walked to the base area, stopping by the restrooms, then heading past the chairlift, up the snow staircase to the registration yurt. Here we received tickets and signed our life away before heli orientation. This is all expert only terrain. It's all backcountry oriented terrain. You know, team effort is our communication. You gotta stay very verbal with your guides all day. The 30 minute briefing covered essential avalanche safety, communication, and heli procedures. From there, we got into our groups, signed the flight manifesto, and hopped on the chairlift. Ready or not. Basically, don't touch anything on the helicopter because it could break. Very fragile. Our guiding group were mostly snowboarders, which was awesome. There were six groups of eight with each guide, and the helicopter took one group at a time. At the top of the chairlift was a short hike up the Cirque to the heli landing zone for the first pickup. Secure the skis and snowboards into an organized pile and crouch down on one knee, huddled together. When the heli comes in for the first time, it's a thrilling whir and really gets your heart pumping. Everyone keeps their eyes on the chopper, always ready to move back to avoid a zap from the static of the heli, then walk around the front of the chopper, always keeping eyes on the machine, and don't touch the instruments as they might break and will burn a hole through your gloves. Hand your backpack to get loaded, then hop in, grabbing the marked handles, get in a seat, and buckle up. Once everyone's in, hang on, it's time to fly. Inside was a bit noisy, but not bad. It's a large, stable chopper, like a bus, so it can safely fly in most conditions. On our first run, there was bad wind and visibility, so after two attempted landings, we went into a protected tree zone. On the exit, unbuckle, climb out, help stack the backpacks. Then one person helps unload the gear while the rest wait and off flies the chopper to pick up the next crew. Grab your backpack, snowboard, and head to the powder. The runs are definitely expert only, and you must be ready for any type of terrain or snow conditions. There was plenty of fresh snow in the trees. Everyone rides down in pairs, stopping every so often to regroup. We had a great guide and everyone in the group was a similar level of rider. We hit a sweet gully through the trees with fresh tracks and out to a runout area. Stoked for our next flight and line. After a short wait, we were pros getting on the chopper. After a second run through the trees, we were ready for the open terrain. Then we received bad news. The chopper was on flight delay and our day on the slopes might be over. One of the other groups was stuck far out in an exposed area and we had to wait until the chopper could safely pick them up. We waited around then hopped on the smaller shuttle to another landing zone for better pickup options. We packed out the landing area, had a snack, and got the gear ready. Then the good call came. The chopper was on its way. For run three, we finally landed in open terrain in a new zone. We rode one at a time, spaced out to safely navigate the avalanche terrain, and caught the best powder of the day. Fresh tracks, face shots, and the white room. This is what we came for. Woo, that was amazing! With the stormy conditions, we were still close to the resort, so the exit run was similar to the guided terrain, with a long road instead of a heli landing zone. 
At the end, we hopped on the old school bus transportation, which took us back to the base area for another heli pickup. It's not the usual pickup spot, but the pilot was working hard to get everyone their six runs given the conditions and delays. Back into the trees. On our fifth run, we got pretty deep into the rhubarb, falling over down trees and struggling in the snow. Be prepared for everything. Oh, ah. shoot. <laughs> Thought I tried making things interesting. <laughs> Hi. We got like seven oh, turns in there. Whoa. Whoa. Crazy. The sixth and last run was also in the trees. Our legs were pretty tired at the end of the day, especially in the thick trees, but we made the most of it and still had some epic turns. After getting back to the base area, be sure to tip your guide the recommended 20% and hang out at the yurt or in the parking lot for operator swap stories with other guests. While we didn't get deep into the backcountry, our six heli drops were pretty sweet given the conditions. We were grateful for the awesome pilot flying us around safely and our experienced guide leading us to the best snow in each zone. We've been waiting 10 years to check Silverton off the bucket list, but once is not enough. We will definitely be back to explore again.